Hey, welcome to the Care for Data Science channel Puppy Linux uh, series. This series is subtitled Fun with Data. It's all about getting our feet wet and doing basic data and data 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 munching, data wrangling using using uh, standard Unix tools. Okay. So just to make sure we're on the same uh, on the same page here, what you see here is what's called a desktop. Okay. The Linux system similar to Windows, it consists of three parts. It consists of, of the Linux kernel. When you say Linux, it actually refers to the kernel. Then, it, then there's a bunch of system utilities which we're going to use and really fun, we're going to use because they're really fun to use with, with data. And those are, those are actually created by somebody outside the Linux community. Uh, and the third, there's what you see here, the desktop. Now, uh, unlike Windows and Linux, there, there are, who knows, you know, I, I can think of four or five different desktops out of, uh, I, I could run on my Linux installation, and you can run. Uh, you, all you go do is make a, uh, install them and make a change to your system, and you can run. Because, because, because there's, there's, I mean, when I say death, I mean things like this desktop here is called JWM, there's, there's GNOME, there's KDE, there's Mint, there's Cinnamon, and there's all these uh, i3 and Xmonad. All, the, all these, uh, one of the fun things about Linux is there's so many tools to play with. Okay, to show me, and because it's completely free, you can install it as many times you want on as many as computers as you want. Okay. So anyway, what 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 do we have on on on? on at, the, at the end of this session, you're going to download and install Puppy Linux. You're going to do the final setup because in being the final setup, we're going to step the things like screen resolution, system time, and stuff like that. Then we'll go out on the web, we're going to download the COVID-19 data, worldwide COVID-19 data. Then we're going to count the rows in that data, okay? Then we're going to pull out the data for the U.S. Okay? So let's get started. Let me shut this down. Shut it down. Just come over here. Okay? Shut down. Now, I'll save the homework to the last, okay? There is two homework. There's two, you have two problems for your homework, okay? So we're going to start out here. The first thing we need to do, we have to go out, download the public, uh, the public, uh, the Puppy Linux, Puppy Linux uh, ISO file, install file. So let's go over here. I chose this one mainly because it uh, because it has the latest version of, of Python. Okay, so it's really it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more up to date version. So come over here to main. Then you just download it. But I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do it again. Download it, put it someplace where you can find it. You may, you may in fact, even want to create a subdirectory titled Puppy Linux or from this data and put the ISO in there. So you want to keep all your all your Puppy Linux and some of data stuff in, in one spot, okay? Now we've got that, that done. Let's come back over here. We're going to do new. Now, and one of the things about Puppy Linux, it's, it's a small distribution. I mean, the, the, the ISO file stuff was like two or three hundred megabytes. You could you could I mean you can you can it, it was probably less than a gig it's probably not more than maybe a gigabyte of space that actually used installed. So I'm gonna put it into a uh, fifteen or twenty meg partition or a virtual file. You see I have I have plenty of room left down there. So this is called it fun with Select our ISO file. Okay. This, of course, isn't Windows. This is Linux. Now, I'm not really sure what, how important it is we actually label this or not, but uh, we're going to stick to Ubuntu. I'm not sure it really makes any difference which one you, you use. Honestly. I just picked uh, Ubuntu. I just say, oh, I don't know.
is going to be the relic fossa. Okay, because this, as you can see, this 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 ISO is actually called fossa. So this is a this is a fairly new version of of Ubuntu 2004. So this, you know, depend uh, you know depend on how much memory you have. I got 16 gigabytes. I'm going to add give uh, Linux eight eight megabytes, which is more than enough. It really is probably twice as much as I need. Uh, so decide how much you want to give. So I'll just come in here. Uh, again, my instructions here are obviously on, on, on virtual machine. Uh, uh, you can install it directly into a hard drive partition. You can, you can actually create a, a distribution on a on USB stick. Okay? So I'm going to give it four CPUs. Over here. Uh, I'm going to give it, let's say, 12 gigabytes. I'm going to pre-allocate the size. Now, one thing about this, so I actually expand this file because what it does it creates a it creates a file, okay? It will actually expand this file automatically if it, if it, if it runs out of space. If it's trying to run out of space, let's do this. Oh, I forgot to do something very important here. No, I didn't. I I, I had the ISO, didn't I? Okay. Next, next. Now it's going to try to load. Oh, did I mention homework assignments? Okay, good. Right, you got to have homework. What, what's the point if you're taking a class, you don't get any homework assignment or quizzes, right? So this is going to be a little quiz. It's going to be a little homework assignment. Very easy. Don't worry about it. So now we're waiting for this to boot up. You actually have to boot the system twice in, in order to get it in order to get to where we want it. Okay. And this week, no extra bells and whistles. Okay, we're going to stick with the basic installation, and maybe even next week. Let's just take a look here. Here's our goal for now. We're going to install Puppy Linux. We're going to do the final setup. We're going to set, again, we're going to set the mouse. Then we're going to set, you know, set the we're going to set the mouse. We'll set the time, and and most importantly, the screen resolution. We'll download the COVID-19 data. We'll count the rows. Then we're going to extract the rows for the U.S. And then we're going to count the rows again. Okay. No, I got the song again. We got we got a Count the rows, then we're going to come back over here, extract the US data. And count the number of rows in the US file, in the US here. So we'll start this. And at this point, uh, we're booting from the ISO file, from the install file, okay? And we set up the size of the partition, we set up the amount of memory we want to use, and we set up the number of processors we want to use, okay? Do this one little thing before. Do view, scaled, scaled. And this, this means it's going, to fill, it's going to fill the screen for the virtual environment. Now this should be without a problem because we're actually booting off the ISO again, okay?
take a couple minutes here. Here we go. And once again, here is a, this is the JWM web, uh, JWM desktop. Now we're going to do an install. We're going to, we're going to split this right now. We're going to do we're going to do our install. Get rid of that. And we're going to begin by doing an installer down here. Now, if you have, if you if you're using like a USEF, uh, you can use a, you will Start with this option here, okay? If this doesn't work, then come up here, okay? Because I'm not using this. If you use this and it breaks, it's nothing I can really help you with at that point, right? Hit this. Select our device. 12.5 gigabytes. Now we're going to do G parted to. We're going to G parted to. Uh, to create a disk partition, you do distance, create partition table. Come to partition, new. We're going to take up the whole thing. Come back here, we're going to format it. Show details. Not a lot of details there to look at. We're finished, close that. So we'll be here, quit. Uh, let's see. We'll install the disk drive here. We've already done this. Come top right the corner, install puppy to SDA1. You know, if you're using a virtual machine, it, it, they always use S, SDA as your, as your standard install system. It used to be the SDA stood for SCSI drive, the fast SCSI drive, okay? You can Google that if you want to. It's going to delete all everything on the drive. Let's see, any unique name for the folder, no spaces. Let's just leave that there. And again, just a reminder, at this point, we're still we're still running off the ISO. We're not actually going with the, part, the table itself, okay? Yes. Yes. Proceed anywhere. Okay. 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 Close this. Yep, we wanted this. Okay, all done. Puppy installer done. Now we're going to come down here. We're going to do exit, shut down. Save, continue, no encryption, okay. You know, it doesn't really make any difference what you call this. Okay, save. Uh, you can use a swap file, depend on how much memory the machine has. But if you have more than eight gigabytes of memory, you really don't need it starting out. You got, it, it, notice this, this creates a file inside your partition, inside your system, okay? So you can also come back and add this again, all right? I'm going to say swap not required. I got 16 gigabytes. So now it's closed down, all right? Now we're going to start it. So it's the full screen. Now we'll go back here. Now we're going to adjust our screen resolution, OK? Hit Enter. When you see this copy gram, that, that's a good sign. It means it should boot up okay.
We're now on the step 2A final setup. Now it's 20th, it's February 1st, 2337. No, is that right? Okay. Uh, 12 and 23 is 11. So this, this isn't correct. The date's correct, but we're not to 23 yet. Because we 12 and 23 would be what? The 11 p.m., the 26, 37 p.m. So go back to setup. Uh, keyboard, graphics, do this. X render. I'm going to start out with uh, something around on a 1400. Okay, what do you think? Do okay. Say yes. How many? Quit. Date and time. Just in time. This is correct. Okay, what time is it now? It uses 24 hour time. So this is 6.30 p.m. plus 12, so it's 18, right? Set time. GMT. We can either use this, or we can use the uh, U.S. Eastern time. Okay. Hardware clock. Local. Yes, it should be local. Update software clock or hardware clock. The match. Okay. We got this system here. We're going to say yes. We want to synchronize to the uh, time server. And there we start. Okay. That takes care of that. That. Yep. That's it. So it's 1839 here. Okay, you know what? And let's do one more. Let's do one more booth till we get the correct, the correct screen reservation again. Exit. And oh, this time, oh, you know, we didn't do. We didn't unmount it. We didn't unmount the uh, ISO. We got to unmount the ISO at this point. Okay. Remove that. So this way, when we boot, it, we should see the. Uh, we should actually get our live, our live distribution, our live, our live, our live, our live install here. Okay. Now, I should point out that, uh, you know, any language you want to work with is probably available for free on Linux, okay? Certainly as a C++ compiler called G++. You got Python, you got R, you got Fortran, uh, Lisp, not to mention probably a bunch of really obscure little, little languages, but, you know, it's one of the views of Linux is there's so many tools to play with, okay? You want to do web, web development, C++ development, Android development, yeah, you can do all that on Linux. You want to run it? Yes, you want a, a, your own web server. I wouldn't recommend doing it on this, but you can certainly do it on. You can run it locally. Now, one thing to understand about it is hopefully, uh, 
Okay, see what happened here is? I didn't say it because I, because I didn't unmount the uh, the ISO. I didn't actually write any changes to the to the uh, to the to the system itself. So we're gonna do this again. Time from internet. Now this here is just a little. Uh, you can see you can enable a firewall, but since I'm running on a, on you know on a virtual box, it's not that important. You can also do this so you want in your apps as spot. Spot is a is a, is a user it's created, but it's but it's a very limited in what what what, what you can actually do. Now, one thing about this, uh, unlike full internet uh, and full versions of uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu or I'll mention there's, there's, really, there's really three main distributions. There's Ubuntu, which this is based on. There is Debian, and there's Red Hat. Those are really the big three. So let's come back over here and change our screen resolution again. So remember to unmount, when you get, when you, after you finish your NIST install, remember to unmount the ISO. That way, next time you boot, you actually boot into your installation set. Let's try 24, what do you think? Do this. Okay, because you actually have to save your changes to your to your distribution. Permanent. Let's do this. Synchronize clock. Yes. See this here isn't ready yet. Synchronize to server. GMT minus eight. So we can't change this here. It's time to sync with the server. Let's go setups. Time. The, the date is correct. Do this. The date is correct here. Uh, this uses a 24 hour time. So this will be 12 plus 6 is 18. All right. I think that's correct. Internet connection is working. Do this. What? Hang on a second here. Hang on here. That doesn't look right. This is Wednesday. Right, this is Wednesday, right? Okay. Uh, we're going to come down here, take a look at this, that time zone. Let's set time zone to East, US, America Eastern. You could also do like GMT time. But let's keep it simple. New York, I'm in, I'm in the Eastern Times. Hardware clock is set to UTC. No, it's not. Uh, over to here. Local time. We're going to use a time server as we did before. OK. Synchronize time. All right. That should be it for right now. Exit. Close this. Let's reboot one more time so we get a nice clean install. Reboot. Save. Yeah, we want to save this. We want to save this now. Run with data. Save. Uh, a swap file is, is, is it can be used if you if your system is older, you low on you low on RAM. I would I'd say if you if you're under if, you, if you're under say eight gigabytes or even four gigabytes of RAM, you might want to use a swap file. But I'm not going. I have 16 gigabytes. So I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So at this point, you should have a clean install, okay? Now, it's a, so what have we got next on our, on our to-do list here? 
Now, now we get to start with the phone stuff, okay? Uh, the poor data down from uh, COVID-19 data down from the uh, site called uh, called GitHub. We're going to count first. We count the rows in the Tardo file. Then we're going to extract the data for the U.S. COVID-19 data, and then we'll count the rows for the U.S. Okay. So ignore the homework down below. That's ignore the man behind the curtain. Okay. Here we are, okay. Now I, per I personally don't like this this particular uh, this particular file, this particular web browser, but in the, in, the, in the sessions that come, we'll install Chromium along with other Unix utilities which we need, okay? No, I don't want to make it the permanent one, okay? So we're going to come up here. Now we're going to do a search for uh, we're going to search for R world in data COVID nineteen COVID on GitHub. And here we are. Okay. And we're going to download two files. First, we're going to download the code book because that's, that, that's what describes all of our columns. Now, first of all, first of all, let's make a space to store our data. That's just your first command. Uh, PWD is a, is a current working directory currently in root. Uh, one note about this, uh, this is really intended to be a single user system, so there isn't really any security. Like password security and like that involved. So, but anyway, the uh, the make directory can is mkdr. I think so. Mkdr directory. Pandemic. Oops. Now we we could call for we could call like our world and data. We can store our world and data data in there, but we'll come back. We'll worry about that later on. We got a directory. Okay. Now we're going to come over and uh, come under there. Okay. Now, now we got our file. First, we're going to download the uh, the cook uh, the cookbook. <laughs> uh, go to file. We've got all the unfortunately for this data. Click on raw. Now we got the file. What we're going to do is here, we're going to come back over here. We're going to highlight all of this. Okay. We're going to come over to the wget command. There's our first file. We're going to come back over here again. Now we'll download the actual data itself. Now this file is too big to actually display. That's what's going to tell us here in a minute. We should have gone to, we should have gone to raw data instead. Uh, the reason I keep looking at the end of the, uh, the screen is because uh, what happened was my, my, my display on my laptop started to go out. And rather than having the display on my laptop fixed, I just bought a 24-inch monitor. The trouble was my camera still on the laptop. So actually, I said, so here we go. So we'll come back over here, do a wget again. And and when you cut and paste inside a terminal, on, on my system, on my mouse, I use the center mouse nest to paste function, okay? 
If you have a, have a two button mouse, you may have to use you know, both buttons at the same time. Okay, we're into the home stretch for the uh, for the uh, for the for the for this first interesting section. And hey, if you hang if you if you hung with this, this so far, thanks so much for hanging there. But it gets more interesting and more fun as we go along in the coming weeks, the coming days and weeks. Okay. So there's our data. Let's just take a look at the at the at the cookbook for a moment. Okay, another command we can use here. There's less. There's more. There's head. And there is tail, believe it or not, okay? So let's take a look at head first. Now, now, now remember when I, in the beginning I said there's three parts to Linux. There's the kernel, there's the system utilities, and then there's the, uh, the desktop. Well, head, it, it commands like head, tail, more, or less, uh, you know, any, anything, any, any command you use to interact with, your, with, with the system is the system utility, okay? So, so we're going to use a, we're going to use three system utilities right here. We're going to use the head, we're going to use the tail, we're going to use less, and maybe more. Now, the difference between less and more is <laughs> uh, less actually scroll back and forth through the file, while, while, while more just displays it uh, just displays it down, scrolls down the file, but not back up. Okay. So let's let's take a look at head. I mean, and this never hurts. So it never hurts to just to take a peek at some of your data. And so we just displayed, what do we do? We just did a head. So this, this displayed the first five lines, whatever those five lines are, okay? So now, student, you notice also you got, you got uh, history, you got, you, got, you got the command history, you can do up and down, okay? So now let's come back, let's do back up, let's just do a tail instead. Here that is, you see, you know, See, we got some links in there. And then this is the COVID-19 data as of yesterday, as of uh, January 31st, I believe, okay? So we got that. Let's look at head-1. Let's look at left. Let's look at left first. So now we can now we can scroll through, and we can see basically what it says. So what it ha what it has in it is it has the, the name of the column and a description of what the column contains. Okay. So let's come back over here now. Let's do a head. Let's, let's do an ls. Look at our file. Now let's take a look at the beginning of the data. Okay. We're, we're going to display the first line. And what this gives us this gives us our column name. And tonight we're interested. We're actually only interested in, in the in the uh, ISO. In the uh, location is the uh, is the country name. So you got the ISO code, the continent, the, the country, and the date, total cases, new cases, uh, you know, and so forth. The difference between I'll see right now the difference between total case and new cases. New the total cases is the cumulative total cases to date to that up up to that date. New cases are the number of cases per day, okay? So now we got that. So what's our, what's our command? So we just, we just, uh, now we're going to count the rows in the file. WC is like word, oh, I'll mention one more thing here, man page. The man page is, 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 is the documentation. So we could say man oh, WC. And now we see what the WC is. Okay. Let's see. Uh, print new line word count. Uh, not right now. Uh, so this is this is uh, prints prints a new line. It, so it counts the line, it counts the word, and it counts the characters. But most of all, our, our important thing the die shell count. So this counts characters, bytes. And this counts uh, uh, dash L as the lines. Okay, now what's this say here? Read input from files specified by null terminated names in the file. Okay, 
maximum line length, uh, print the length of, of the longest line, and words, and so forth, okay? So now because we want to do a dash L, okay, in order to uh, find out how many lines are in our, in our So, in, to date, uh, as a uh, in our in our in our COVID-19 data, we have 254,170 rows. Now, let's say, uh, so what you have here, by the way, is you have one row for each country for each day. Okay. So now we want to come. We want to we want to pull out that we want to pull out the uh, the data for you. So what have we done? Well, guess what? We just finished this. This, this, this thing right, we, we just finished these two steps right here, okay? So now we're gonna come over here. Now we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna create a file, okay? Which contains our header. Remember the header is the, is the column name. And so I'm gonna say use head, I wanna, I wanna pull out the first line. So let's, let's call this, a, okay? So you notice the pipe here, the pipe takes the output from what's called standard output, that's what comes back to the screen, and it sends it to a file over here. So we can come over here now and just look at this real quick. And there they are. That's actually one line. Okay, so now what we do, now we only want to pull out the data just for the US. And this, this is where it starts to get fun. There's a command called grip. I'm actually going to pull it by the ISO code, the first field, so I'll put all the records for the US by the ISO code. Now the double pipe says append it onto the next file listed. So this is going to append it onto our US COVID-19. This will have the first line in the file is uh, The, the first, the first line. So the first line of this new file is going to be the column headings followed by all the rows for for the U.S. by date. Okay. So again, single pipe creates a file. A, a single pipe will also overwrite the existing file that exists. The double pipe, double write errors will, will append them onto that onto the file listed to the right. So we're going to append all the rows between U.S.A. and them from here on the right. Okay. But let's just do one thing first. Let's just check a let's just check ahead here. Make sure we okay, good. I wasn't sure what is US, USA, but it is US. Then we come back over here. And uh, and the, we have one thousand one hundred sub one actually one hundred six one thousand one hundred six rows because the first row is the heading. Uh, in our file, okay? And so we finished all of our lessons for tonight, okay? So now it is time for your homework. Your first homework assignment is to go to GitHub Go to github.com, create an account. Okay, step two is to make a, ba uh, is to make a backup of the file. So, this is, so we're gonna come over here now, we're gonna do the last thing for this evening. Can we hear it? Do a shutdown. Here's our system from over here to your file manager. Now, obviously, if you're installing this onto a, <laughs> onto a, uh, you know, on, uh, as a as a, stand, as a standalone partition on your on your Windows box, I'm not quite sure how you go to back it up. You can certainly back it up to a USB stick. You, you can you can create your own ISO image and back it up to a USB stick. So so uh, if you come over here. On, a, on my Windows machine, where this where this is located is, it's located under Users, Username, 
and you scroll all the way down here to where it says VM machines, okay? And here's, and here's our new file, we'll go do a copy. Okay, now what I suggest that you do is, is every time you make a positive change to your system, you add something to it where it's data or programs and it works, uh, make a backup of this file, okay? And you know what, you don't go you'll be going like a gangbusters for next week and all of a sudden have your system crash and everything you worked on is gone because you didn't save this system. Now there are, there are of course ways that you can back up, within Linux there are tools you can, you can actually back up to say, Different ways. You're probably the best way, like I said, if you, if you actually do it as, as, as a system, uh, Linux or uh, this puppy Linux actually has, I believe, a command to create an I to create an ISO and write it out to a memory stick. Okay. Now we had a yeah. So you're so your first, assi your, first, your first assignment is to create a GitHub account, and your second one is to back up your system. And just as a little heads up, next session on Friday is going to be, we're going to start you know, getting our hands at Oracle sleeves, get our hands dirty, working with some of them good old Unix system utilities, uh, text utilities in, in Unix, okay? So the fun really starts Friday. I'll also point, point out in the interest of full disclosure, everything we've done here, I've done here tonight, and will do, has been covered someplace on YouTube, okay? <laughs> but hey, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to watch the video. If you have a friend who's interested in it, share you know, share the video with them. Again, of course, very important, you click the subscribe button, the like button, and also click that, that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I, I upload a new video, okay? And again, if you want to post uh, questions or comments, always welcome. Uh, I want to encourage, I say the one possible way to do it is have your parent or somebody who's over 18 that you can trust, okay, to log on to their, to their YouTube system, go to Caribou Data Science channel, uh, and then go to the newest video on the Caribou Data Science channel, whatever it is, and just post your comment there, and I'll get, I'll get an email telling me that you posted a comment, okay? Okay, so now we'll come up here, we're going to rename this. I'm just going to call this I'm also going to call it viewer one. All right, so now we have our backup. So now our system shut down. With that, my, with that uh, student, I appreciate you taking time off of your day to actually come and watch this video. Again, questions, comments, always welcome. And remember, Linux is fun and data is fun, okay? Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in uh, Friday evening.